This summer, I'm going to perform the Gershwin Piano Concerto in F. It's a wonderful piece that George wrote in 1925. It's actually the piece that immediately follows his first piece for piano and orchestra, Rhapsody in Blue, which came from 1924. But there's a difference. George Gershwin never orchestrated Rhapsody in Blue. He just wrote out his piano part, and then what the band, the Paul Whiteman band, was supposed to play. And it, it was Paul Whiteman's orchestrator, Ferdy Grofay, who orchestrated actually all three versions of Rhapsody in Blue. But Gershwin then decided it was ridiculous that he couldn't orchestrate himself. And so he taught himself. He read a book on orchestration, and he taught himself to orchestrate. And it's an extraordinary achievement. Um, regardless of whether he got help or not, it doesn't matter. The piece starts off with this loud timpani solo, which is extraordinary in its own, just as an inventive moment as an orchestrator and very boisterous beginning from the orchestra that sets the mood for the piece, but then it suddenly dissipates as the snare drum roll and the piano comes in, stops the traffic, and then like Rhapsody in Blue, the sondo, and suddenly we're in a very sad sound world. wonderful use of the piano at its most melancholy and of course eventually things pick up the piano does a little bit of a cadenza <laughs> said about George Gershwin is he made a lady out of jazz. Um, that's probably a, an overstatement, but one thing he did do, of course, was bring jazz into the concert hall. And he influenced so many other classical composers. We forget that sometimes, but even Maurice Ravel, the great Maurice Ravel, went on to write two piano concertos after this piece appeared. They both have heavy jazz uh, elements, which clearly came straight from George Gershwin. Now, the really fun thing about this piano concerto is that there was a new dance form that had just come out in the early 20s called the Charleston. And the second subject of this concerto is the Charleston. And we're back to George at his most fun. soft shoe, you know. So there's that episode, and that actually uh, morphs into an absolutely gorgeous orchestral tutti that's not unlike the Rhapsody in Blue one. But different time signature, but it's the same idea. And, and out of that big climax, and then suddenly the piano erupts with an entirely new episode, but still based on the Charleston. And it's that wonderful sense of percussion that Gershwin brings to his piano writing that is just so uniquely George. Um, George Gershwin had a boyhood friend growing up that went on to live many, many, many years longer, uh, who became one of the top piano teachers in New York, Abram Chasens. But Chasens' famous comment was, George really knew how to make a piano laugh, really laugh. And, and that's so true. When you, when you play his music, there's so much joy in it, usually. The next episode is a case in point. <laughs>
comes to a riotous ending with everybody joining in, in the Charleston. So it's like this. <laughs> takes off so it's very exciting very f major second movement is this amazing blues it's a huge solo for a trumpet uh, that's right out of the jazz any jazz book you can think of very jazzy um, then the piano again does the reverse of the first movement it does shatter the mood but in a different way instead of coming in all mopey and the sad it comes in saying enough lighten up <laughs> Again, a lot of fun. Going through all the keys, as Gershwin does in this. And so it's, it's a wonderful movement. There are some quiet moments of repose for the piano. near the end of the movement with four celli and the solo piano. It's absolutely stunning. Last movement erupts in a burst of energy, everybody going full tilt. And again, this is sort of George's, George Gershwin's famous, we call it his New York rhythm, which is a very fast paced, very, a lot of repeated notes in Rhapsody in Blue. It's in this, it's the whole first theme. Come hear us do George Gershwin's Concerto in F. It's a fantastic piece, and it's a great thrill to, to present it all these years later after it's written, but it's, it is the anniversary. So 90, 90 years young, this piano concerto. Thank you. <laughs>